Hey guys, back here at Mr. RV Tech. My name is Josh. Today we're going to go over a Coleman mock air conditioner. Uh, this is a used unit that we removed that failed, but what we're going to do is a full walk around of the interior of this thing. And then for a bonus in this video, I'm going to show you how to do air conditioner maintenance on your RV air conditioner. This will apply to Furion, Dometic, uh, even carriers, if you still got one of those old carriers, and the Coleman. And they don't all look the same, obviously, but all the parts are the same and they're generally in the same place. Uh, without further ado, Tyler, if you could come in here a little closer, let's talk about the tools needed for the maintenance and then we'll get them off of here and open this thing up. First thing you want is a rinseless coil cleaner. We just happen to use this brand right here, 3X. You're gonna want a blower or a vacuum cleaner to clean out the base of the air conditioner while you're up there. It does uh, collect debris like leaves, pine needles, dead frogs, birds, bird nests, that kind of stuff, bees especially. You're going to want an air conditioner uh, fin comb. So these, you can buy this on Amazon for next to nothing. If you take a look at these, you get the little handle and then all these different sizes fit in there. This is the most common one that you're going to use for these uh, RV air conditioners, this little green one. So we're just going to keep that with us. You're going to want a drill driver with a Phillips and possibly a square bit. Now these screws on top are technically uh, number three Phillips, but a square bit works well. And if they're not too tight and rusted, you can get it out with a number two Phillips. And then we're going to want a nylon brush. You do not want to use a brass or stainless steel metal brush on this thing. You just want a fairly stiff, but not too hard nylon brush. All right, those are the maintenance tools. Without further ado, let's do it the walk around first. So we'll open this up. We'll remove four stainless steel screws and washers from the top. Set those aside. Now, one thing I want to point out on the Coleman, if you look down here, when we open this up, we've got these three little keepers that are holding that front down. So when you take it off, kind of pop it loose. When you're putting it on, make sure it doesn't go behind them. Sometimes it'll get caught behind this tab and make sure it is locked in and it's not pushed up like that. You want to lock that underneath those. You can open the, or pull the front up first, lift the back, and carefully remove the cover. Set it aside. All right, now what we're going to do, uh, before we talk about the components, you can see most of them here, but there's two important ones that we need to talk about inside the evaporator box. That's what we're going to refer this to this as. Again, Phillips, several screws to remove. I did leave them all in there, so we're going to do the whole process here. I believe it's five on each side, if I'm not mistaken. Five across the front. And those tabs are actually going to come off. They will need to be reinstalled. One, two, three. Looks like we're missing one. Number five. And then the one in the back. Set those down. Now, one thing I want to point out um, this is an evaporator box, so we don't want any outside humidity and air leaking in here. So when you put this back together after your service, it's a really smart idea to go ahead and tape these seams all the way across. All these seams, just completely cover them in tape. Coleman just puts a little piece on the corner. Um, I don't think that's adequate personally. I want this thing to perform as good as it can. We're going to remove the evaporator box cover. What you can see here is your evaporator coil. Now if this were in an RV, you would have had a control box bolted to that cover. Um, this is literally looking down into your RV. So this is your intake right here. So let's talk about the components real quick. We have our nine pin cable here um, that's gonna plug into our control box. Again, this is your evaporator coil. And I'm gonna explain what this does exactly. And then if you'll come over here, Tyler, we have our blower fan. So this is a single motor. You're gonna have your condenser fan blower and then your indoor blower uh, is inside there. It's gonna be really difficult to see. 
next you have your compressor and then you have your condenser coil which is on the outside then one last thing Tyler actually come around to the other side so they can get a real good view of this just walk around here this is our electrical panel cover just a couple screws hold it on it is equipped with a schematic on the back side and inside here you're going to see two capacitors on this particular model anyway this one here is for your compressor and this one here is for your fan and if you want to know how to test those and see if that's what your problem is um, you can refer to my how to test a capacitor video on my channel so those are the components and the way this thing works if you go back around this way is air gets sucked in from your RV through the intake here and it's going across this evaporator coil well, what's occurring in this evaporator coil is the refrigerant has been compressed and as it passes through this evaporator coil the refrigerant is freezing cold so the humidity and heat from the RV are running across this coil and there's copper tubes inside of here that are ice cold on the other side you have that indoor blower wheel and it's sucking that ice cold air and blowing it straight down into the RV or the ductwork so what happens to the humidity that gets taken out of the RV is it gets stuck on these fins and in between them and it runs down into a tray underneath it and then on the bottom side of Tyler I don't know if you can get a shot of that yeah right there you've got drains this one actually is plugged a little bit it's one of the things you do for maintenance but the water the condensate is going to drip out of these two drains on the roof so one thing I see people do while we're down here is they'll tighten this gasket too much because they're trying to chase a leak and this thing will sit right down on the rubber roof and boom I just plug my drain do not do that one other point while we're at this exact area I want to make is on the Coleman there's an extremely sharp uh, galvanized piece of sheet metal here so if you're changing a gasket or working with it and lifting it in any way you don't want to tip it up on your rubber roof sideways because this will just cut a big slit in your rubber roof and then you know you need twelve thousand dollars to fix that we don't want to do that so what happens to all that heat that gets pulled into that refrigerant that's going through those copper tubes? What happens is it comes over here to our condenser coil and it's super heated, like extremely hot at this point, that refrigerant is. So that's what our condenser fan is for. It's sucking air across this coil and cooling that refrigerant back down so that it can come and be compressed again and sent through the evaporator. And that's the basic operation. One thing I notice about this unit Somebody's replaced the fan. This is not factory. There should be no connectors. Um, it's fine if there are. I wouldn't use this style. I don't know who would actually. <laughs> but somebody did. Um, so we can see this fan's been replaced. That should be just continuous wiring. All right. So now that we've gone over the components, evaporator, condenser, blower fan, compressor, and the capacitors over in this uh, electrical box, and the drains, of course, on the condensate tray, Let's talk about how to do maintenance and I'm going to do this really quick but I will be to the point. So the first thing you want to do is clean out that tray. You're going to find, this one's fairly clean, but you're going to find spider webs. Uh, literally I always find a dead frog. Um, you're going to find pine needles, walnuts, leaves, just anything in there. So what I do is take a blower and I kind of brush this area of the condenser out here and just blast it real good. get any debris I can find in there and get it all blown out. Blow out the electrical box. Blow out the interior of the evaporator box. Again, this one was pretty clean. The next step is to take that nylon brush and come over here to the condenser and watch how much dust is going to come out of this thing. I'm assuming, I haven't done this yet, but just watch. You can see that these fins are really dusty. They've been accumulating outside debris. You want to scrub those real good. Pretty much do it until the dust stops coming out. Now let's say you get up here and something's contacted these fins and you've got a couple dimples, maybe hail, who knows what. That's where the fin comb comes in. So you want to take this fin comb, we want to flatten those out because we need as much air to pass through here as we can. So you want to start down here so you have a good spacing between your fins and just run it up to the damaged area and try your best to straighten those out. And this is a terrible representation is the 
aluminum is breaking down because it's so old, but you just try to open them up. Anywhere you see it smashed. Once I brush them, I'll blow the dust out that may have been loosened up. Then we're gonna shoot this coil with some rinseless coil cleaner. I love using this because you don't have to drag a hose up on the roof and you don't have to worry about it. It's safe for RV roofs. So as it leaks out on there, it's not gonna damage the EPDM or TPO. You always wanna start at the top of the coil, and work your way from end to end, all the way back and forth until you get to the bottom row. I use this on the A coil in my home as well. Good stuff. And that's it for the condenser. You're gonna do the exact same thing for the evaporator coil. Um, people that have pets, you're gonna get in a lot of accumulation um, of hair and kind of this matted look on here. This one's pretty darn clean, actually. Um, there's a device called a freeze control that you'll find stuck in between your fins. That's supposed to be there and you definitely need to put it back when you're finished, but you wanna remove it for the cleaning process. Same thing, you're just gonna brush, comb as necessary. We got a little spot right there. Clean that up, get those straightened out. Um, you do not want to comb where your freeze control goes because you want to put it back in there. But any other areas that might be smashed or spaced out real bad, you want to comb those to the best of your ability. Again, spray it with the rinseless coil cleaner, and that's it. I do always check, of course, I've removed power from the unit. This one obviously isn't powered. But I always check this fan blade right here on the front side, which is kind of hard to get to, and put my fingers in there. Mud daubers like to build nests on this side of this fan, and that'll unbalance it, and you'll get a lot of vibration. Your ceiling might even be bouncing inside. It's the first place I go is right there. So uh, other than that, as far as maintenance goes, I do wipe everything down with a rag. Of course, as I said, I tape up the evaporator box completely with aluminum duct tape. Uh, that way I don't get any air going in there. It's all coming from inside the RV. And lastly, always check the gasket as well to make sure that it's not compressed too far and these drains are off the roof. Now, you can't really get to these drains when it's mounted to the roof. Like, we've got a really good view of it right now. But what you can do is look right down here. You're not going to be able to see very well in this video. But you can see the tray sitting down in there. And sometimes you'll see a buildup of algae in that black plastic tray. What I'll do is, uh, if it's real bad, I'll get my shop vac and actually, actually put a McDonald's straw. I tape it onto the end of it so I've got this little tiny vacuum nozzle and I stick it down in the top of those drains and suck that algae out of there. And that'll free them up so that it drains properly on the roof. And that's about it. I'm not gonna put this together. That would be boring. Um, we're gonna throw this in the scrap pile. But uh, I appreciate you watching. I hope this helps some folks. If you have any questions, uh, about anything about this Coleman air conditioner or other rooftop air conditioners, uh, perhaps how to test things, you can request a video, I will make one, or just ask me in the comments. I do try to get back to everybody. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and I really truly hope that they help you maintain and repair your RV. Thanks again, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And tell your fellow RVers about me because I'm the guy that's gonna help you keep your RV on the road. Thanks again, guys. See you next time.